So now that we've completed downloading and installing uh, the MPLAB uh, integrated development environment and also the MPLAB C18 compiler, we're ready to start writing software to load into our 18F4550. So we'll begin MPLAB. And here's what the opening screen looks like. So if we go to Project and Project Wizard, and then next on the first screen, uh, Device. We definitely want to choose a device. You can see all the different devices here that uh, you can possibly write software in MPLAB to program all the various PICs, DS PICs, etc. We want to make sure to choose the 18F4550. Pick 18F4550. If uh, you ever start a project and you by accident you don't choose the correct device to begin with, under Configure and Select Device there is an option here to do that. Unfortunately I found that if you choose the wrong device by accident to begin with, write a program, compile it, work with it a little bit, then you notice that, then you change the device later, You ideally that should work perfectly, but in reality you can get into some problems with that. So when you're starting your project to begin with, you definitely want to kind of double check yourself here and make sure that you choose pick 18F4550. Then we'll choose next. Now this uh, next screen we can choose basically which compiler we'd like. So uh, this drop down here gives you the choice of various installed compilers. Um, what we want to do is we want to choose the uh, microchip C18 tool suite. So that'll be the microchip C compiler. And you'll notice here it lists some of the various locations of the files or some of the various files involved and then here lists the location of them. Version 3.40 that's that C compiler we downloaded earlier. So then we want to choose next and now under new project file we want to choose open and uh, now we want to create a probably a folder for our project and then also the project itself so uh, just to have this easy to find all created on the desktop for this example. So first let's create a new folder and we're going to call this um, 18F4550 blank internal clock. Uh, the reasons for calling it internal clock specifically is that later on in the third demo board that I'm going to show you, the USB demo board where we use the external clock, uh, for testing purposes we're going to make a blink program that uses an external clock um, to test to make sure the clock is working right before we do the rest of our circuit. So you always want to have a, a blink program with an internal clock and an external clock on your computer. That allows you to, during the debugging process, you can just get a lead blinking and that's kind of like taking the heartbeat of the chip to make sure you have everything wired up. So you'll want to keep this program as well as that one on hand for future reference and then also that's why we're using this separate name internal clock. And then I'm going to do a control C to copy that name. That's going to make it easier in the next steps. So now if we navigate into that directory on our desktop, 18F4550 blink internal clock. And then under file name, I'm going to paste what I copied a moment ago, 18F4550, make sure my spelling's right and everything. Blink internal clock. Okay, that looks good. And then we're going to choose save. So now here it states, uh, where we just chose to save it to. So there's the folder and there's the project name that we're going to choose next. And the next step is add existing files to your project if you needed to. In this case we're just going to make one C file for it when we start the project so we're going to leave this blank here and choose next. And then there's our summary and finish. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a Windows Explorer and navigate to the directory we just created so we can see the files um, that the IDE creates for us as we go. So let's see, where would that be? Blink internal clock, there we go. <clears throat> so once we created the original project, there's three files. There's blink internal clock.mcp and mcw. These are the two project files. If you ever want to open the project again later on, you can double click either of these rather than going to MPLAB first and going to file open or project open. So here we are in our project. So in other words, for example, if we close, it'll ask you we wish to save the workspace before closing. Yes, we do. So for example, let's see, we came to our desktop like this someday. Here's our folder. Then we could just double click on either of these and it would take us right back into our project. 
So here's our project. It doesn't have any source files, header files, object files, anything like that yet. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, New. And we have to, before we can save it, we have to type something. So I'll just type a comment. Now if we go to Save. Uh, now note, unfortunately, <clears throat> MPLAB in this case, we were just working in this directory, but it doesn't always take you to the directory you just created or saved something in. So uh, make sure that you navigate to the correct directory that you're trying to save something to. In this case, it did take us to that same directory, but it doesn't always. And then we're going to add the file name here. So uh, 18f4550blink internal clock dot c and double check that we're saving it in the correct directory 18f4550blink internal clock. Another thing that's a little bit of an oddity of MPLAB is once you're in a project and you create a new file you might think it would automatically add that file to the project. Unfortunately it does not. You have to check this box here at the bottom add file to project and then click save. So double check we're in the correct directory. We have the correct file name with the .c after it and add file to project. That looks good. So if we do save, we can now see the C file appears over here in our uh, file browser. So let's resize it. So we have the whole screen to work with. And this bottom window here, uh, when we uh, compile things or search for stuff in certain files and so on, it, this will be our output for that, but we'll get to that later. So we've re resized our main window here. And I'm going to copy and paste the name again, 18f4550blinkinternalclock.c. And now we're ready to start writing our code. So if we do a file save and then compile, well, it's going to fail to build because we don't have anything in it yet, but that's okay. And that's how we will do it once we have something to compile. There's the build all button. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do when working with the 18F4550, and if you're used to writing desktop software but you've never written embedded software before, this is going to be a little bit new. But we have to do our uh, chip configuration options. And then we'll put a comment line all the way across. Now this, this next step here, this chip configuration option list, this isn't going to be the most fun or exciting programming in the world, but it's absolutely essential you don't skip this step. Basically, um, the 18F4550 has a whole bunch of uh, features that it can perform. It can check itself. Uh, you can set certain things by default like the clock and memory area protection and so on. And the microcontroller will try to correct what's going on. But in most cases you don't want it to do that. You just want it to kind of leave stuff alone and run your code. So to make sure it does that what we need to do is we need to go to help and then topics. And then um, we'll find under language tools here pick 18 config settings. And then we're going to nav navigate to the 18F4550. Oops, that's the 4450. And there's the 4550 down there. Okay, 18F4550. So here we'll find all the different chip configura configuration options. There's uh, quite a few here as we go down our list. Definitely what you'll want to do is you're going to want to print this list out. and it uh, prints out to five, six pages, roughly, um, depending on how you have your printer set up. Uh, but in any case, uh, each setting here, uh, they list what the setting is. So this is how you would set it in code, PLL div, and then there's a quick description of it. Uh, unfortunately, you'll notice in the description, it does not list what the defaults are, which is another good reason not to leave these as the defaults. I can't emphasize that enough. What's gonna happen if you leave these as the defaults, you do the tempting thing and skip this step, is at some point the microcontroller will start clearing itself automatically unbeknownst to you or the watchdog timer will kick on or memory protection for something you're trying to change will kick on some really weird behavior that you won't be able to figure out at first will happen because you didn't set the default options so let's take the time to go through and set these now now the first uh, three options actually the first four options are pertaining to the clock uh, PLL div that's uh, phase lock loop prescaler selection bits, uh, system clock postscaler selection bits, and then USB clock section bit. So if you refer to the 18F4550 datasheet, one of the first sections in the 18F4550 datasheet is the section on the clock or the oscillator as it's listed. And it's a big datasheet, so it might take a moment to come up. There we go. But if we go to section two here, oscillator configurations. Once you get into using the external clock, you're definitely going to want to read this section, and especially you're going to want to take a look at this diagram here. It explains the clock options extremely well. 
but for now for this demo board what we're going to want to do is we're basically going to want to use the internal clock and that will involve setting this fourth option here and then the previous three options essentially it doesn't really matter what we have them set to since we're going to be using the internal clock so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to type pragma config that's the statement that we're going to start with when we're setting all these options here so we're going to type pragma config pll div is assigned 5 so this does not matter since we are using the internal clock for now of course it will matter later when we're using the external clock and then we'll do a pound pragma config probably a good idea to copy and paste pragma config with the space after it that way you won't have to keep typing it so now referring to our compiler options list here the next option is CPU div so we're gonna type CPU div is assigned osc1 underscore pll2 so again where you get what you could potentially assign CPU div Two is from this list here. Here's your choices: ask one PLL two, ask two PLL three, ask three, and so on. Okay, I need up my spacing here, and since I'm going to say the same thing, I'll just copy and paste it. And the third clock option that, for the moment, does not matter. Pragma config uh, USB div is assigned to and again this doesn't matter since we're using the internal clock now I happen to choose values for these that are going to be uh, similar or exactly the same as the values that we're going to use later on when we are using the external clock so we won't have to change much when we get to that but for the moment we'll leave them as that so now the next setting uh, F ask gives us uh, quite a few choices here as we can see depending on whether using an internal clock or an external clock and which pins you'd like to be able to use with that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do pragma config f -osc is assigned int o s c i o e c and that's short for internal oscillator 